Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Second ago, and I was thinking, man, I'm totally going to lead this episode in with an I am the terror that flaps in the night quote <laughs> because Darkwing Duck yeah. being oh, yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. Batman analog for. I would have rather uh, watched the Darkwing <laughs> Duck movie. What? Yeah, this was garbage. We are talking about The Mask of the Phantasm, the Batman animated movie from 1983 that would have been my not, uh, 93 sorry sorry yeah, 93 yeah. that would have been okay if this was 1983 i take it all back it was visionary <laughs> and amazing for its time 93 that that actually that was my that was my sophomore year in high school was uh, was when this came out and i remember going to see it in the theater with some friends and then i didn't watch it again until today and and who are you again oh i'm dusty and i'm matthew <laughs> And I'm Nathaniel. <laughs> no, hi everybody. I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. Okay. So yes, we this is this came out in December of 1993. Uh, that same year, there was Tombstone, which was a really good movie for for ninety in the nineties. Schindler's not a very, List, not a very good pizza though. No, despite no. what the commercials would say, I would never want a Tombstone pizza to be I, anywhere near my epitaph. I preferred Red Baron. You know, I prefer Totino's. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. a garbage person. No, Totino's, Totino's is great. They're a buck a pizza. And, and, I, and, and not, not like properly cooked in an oven because you don't want to turn on your whole oven for a 99 cent. No, I agree. I the, agree. A Totino should yeah. be microwaved and eat it folded like a fat, sad bastard or will. Or just put in a toaster oven and just put on toast. Back in the day when we used to game at my old place where Dusty joined us for that uh, space mm-hmm. game, we did an uh, annual trash food night and one of my favorites that we always did was totino's pizzas covered in totino's pizza rolls and then wrapped up into burritos (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. dude my okay (laughs) the first time hang on it was glorious arteries hurt the second time the second time i put squeezy cheese on it okay so so 20 year old (laughs) 21 year old 400 and like 20 pound dusty is like in the back of my head, like salivating. Like, man, I gotta go yes. home and work out there's just like, listening to there's that. There's like, there's like a <laughs> golem in the back of my head going, "My precious." Like that is per- now my heart hurts, and fuck you for that. Well, you know, we should do a Batman no. time machine, and I can go back and hang out with 21 year old Dusty. Oh, God, I'm sorry. We can no, just you be know, like, all I, right. I don't think 21 year old Dusty and 18 year old Nathaniel <laughs> would have gotten along. Probably, I was, a, I was, I was pretty <laughs> shitty at that time. Everyone's real shitty at that yeah. time. If you, by the me, way, if you're that age right now, <laughs> fuck you. You're probably a piece of shit. <laughs> you're gonna look back in 15 years and go, ah, oh, fuck, they were right. And if you knew me at that time, I'm sorry, I really am. I was all, <laughs> I was okay. So when people sometimes look back at their lives when they're hitting like their 40s, their 50s, they're all like, I was full of piss and vinegar. I remember my dad saying that a you lot. You know, I agree, Dusty. Anything to not talk about this movie. Continue. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> fuck this movie. <laughs> I was full. I was full of like chomp, chomp, chewy, chomp. That's that's what I was full. Wait, what? But chomp, chomp, but chomp, chomp, chomp. chewy, chewy, chomp. Yeah, fat. So you were full of fat. What is? I don't know. Is that a pop culture reference? No, chomp, it's chomp, not. Chewy, that is. Yes, it's from that South is, Park. Yes, that it's is from South Park oh, with the yeah, monster stand. You know, stand. I dropped off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I dropped <laughs> off South Park. This yeah. was from like season one or two. Yeah. Still, yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I saw a few of them. That just. I'm trying to delay going into this movie because I know you don't like it so and you don't want to talk about let's this. Let's talk movie. about the movie. <laughs> All right. We're Here's gonna... the thing. It was it was a very simple movie. I mean, it was a Dora the Explorer with better background animation. Wow. I mean, it was just there's very little plot, like it was eh. I, I, I honestly I honestly didn't think this would win. I was no, this a I did. I, this, this, was a vote. Yeah, this was the voted one. I didn't yeah. think it would win either. Honestly, this won almost half the vote. Okay, so the fuck yeah. is wrong with so you people? We had this on the vote, and yeah. we had the Michael Keaton Batman. We had the Adam West Batman movie, and then we had the Heath Ledger, uh, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight. Yeah, and I really thought 
Dark Knight was going to take the, the 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 crown on this one. I think it scored lowest. I know. Uh, and yeah. Are they mad at us? Did <laughs> no. we do something wrong? I well, mean, is here's that why the deal. making us do this? <laughs> okay. I know that you did not enjoy that, and I'm actually surprised by that. Why? No. Because I, I had never seen this movie before last night. Really? I, I'd watched that, the that animated series. That surprises me. I've, I watched the animated series. I have all of the animated series. It's not on our Plex server because for some reason, the auto tagging system gets the names wrong and i refuse to put the names wrong on there fair. so i have four seasons of it that aren't on the server okay. but i've never seen the movies and i was impressed there are there are three in this yeah. there's a there's a set of three for this um character the fan mask of the phantasm apparently oh so the andrea character comes back i yes yes oh, oh. well she wasn't i don't remember her from the show i haven't seen what all did she the do with the joker most of it See, they they left it open. They left it open ended there. I Mark like Hamill that. was the saving grace of this movie. Oh, Mark God. Hamill's Joker. If you ask me who I love best is the Joker, it's, it's Mark fucking Hamill. Mark yeah. Hamill, then Cesar Romero, then Jack yeah. Nicholson, and then I I guess you know what I, I agree. Yeah. The lineup is exactly yeah. what you just said. Because yeah. Cesar Romero, owned oh yeah, the campy fun of the character, but Mark Hamill to me. Made there's the some, Joker there's some amazing. evil in Mark Hamill. Oh, God, there is. You hear his there's Joker. some silliness, too. He, his, he's, when yeah. he's got that serious and he's talking was, close to his, his yeah. nearest victim, mm-hmm. that, that's when the real comes out. It's, yeah, it's really but there's good. also that, like, 40s campy one-liners that, that I really like about, about his version of, of the Joker. Well, okay, speaking right, of, like, 40s well, let, campiness. Let's just do this, though. Hold on. What did you like about it? Honestly, okay. well, why? Why is this? Okay. Why, why does this matter to you? I liked the darkness of it. I like the the forties noir like styling of the entire thing. Okay, so take strip everything away from it. Strip away the the acting from Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Take away. I'll say all of that. Mark Hamill's acting, and okay. we'll just, just let it go with that. What the fuck? Way. Conroy is like the best Batman to date. I, I'm what? Sorry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know a few people that will agree with that. <laughs> I, but for me. I, I uh, like the, the, the art deco styling of everything. The North okay, styling, the background the art. I love yes. that. Is, that is my Gotham. In my it's, brain. It's a good Gotham. That is what Gotham appears to me, that art deco-ness. But I, uh, I, I also really liked the, the darkness of Bruce Wayne. Like everything else prior to this version of this iteration. When, when he was crying to his parents asking if he could have Dude, love. What, what fit, fucking let, darkness? I'm getting there. <laughs> Every other like Batman movie has just kind of sort of hinted at what he went through. Like this, the, the, his darkness. Uh, what got him to where he was going to be. This actually had some really good flashback sequences of what put him there. Like with his with his parents. Him asking for like I don't want to do this. I want to have a ha- you know happiness. No. <laughs> no. 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 Th- that's that's just bad parenting. Like you're you're on your knees in the rain. That your parents' spirits are obviously there, and you're like, can I be happy, please? And the thunder crashes, and they go, no, bad parenting. Fuck you. Uh, no happiness for you. I <laughs> will. I will agree. Batman's whole thing is daddy issues. The superhero. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. I, I, I agree. This movie did a to me a good job of making it look as dark as it's supposed to be because he is not a well-adjusted person there is one thing i I really did like and that was just can't i just give a lot of money to the police (laughs) (laughs) that was a good line because that's what he should have been doing from the beginning i know i I agree now now, i mean it is what we watched and and, and as younger or people that are just now coming into it or have seen it multiple times uh what we watched was not the original idea for this movie the original idea uh, was actually something that they did later on in in an episode on the animated series where they had Batman being captured by all of his enemies and he sat trial. I remember that. Yeah, yeah he sat in trial in Arkham Asylum. It was a great fucking episode. It was. Too. One of the, the best of the series. The directors of this said that's, that's too intellectual and Batman isn't moving around enough. It's going to be too boring to sit in a theater and watch him just sit there for yeah. 90 minutes. I, I want to say that I, I love the animated series. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And for the reasons you do, I loved the background art. It was, and and, yeah. uh, and Mark Hamill. But I, I, it wasn't enough to carry a movie. I'm sorry, it just wasn't. And if we were going to do an animated movie, it should have been uh, The Dark Knight Returns, the, the Frank Miller Batman 
I don't think it was meant to be a theatrical release no. initially. Initially, no. It was direct yeah. to disc, supposed to be. But Warner Warner Brothers saw that the art department and the script team was like really upping their game. So they said, you know what? Fuck it. We'll put it into a movie theater. We'll put it in there at Christmas, not do any build up for it. And then it bombed. No. Well, the, well, like any good movie, <laughs> many of the movies that we've talked about that we thought were good that bombed, th- it was poorly advertised. Well, th- yeah. This, well, again, this yeah. was supposed to be direct to DVD yeah. or VHS yeah. at that time. Yep. And there was no like marketing for it. Now, the marketing that they did do for it gave away the ending of the movie. The, the toy line gave away. What was away. the ending? I mean... The reveal of the Phantasm. The, yeah. the the toys that came out before the movie, like... Oh, fuck. You knew what that was halfway through. I know. You and I know that. We knew it when we were watching the, the, it. The, 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 it's, here's the I'll thing. be honest. We didn't last night. Until really? about halfway through, when, when she's talking about, oh... She makes a thing and she says, oh, oh, by the way, listeners, spoilers, <laughs> she makes this comment about how her dad is still out there somewhere. And at some, I turned to my partner. It's like, it's her. Yeah. That's when I knew it. it. From the beginning, it wasn't I even didn't. that. It was from the, the martial arts Honest, moment. Well, I thought that I thought that they were going to do the classic thing <laughs> that they always do in these movies where the hero gets a love interest and they were going to have her killed. That would have been so much better. Yeah. Or just freeze her. You do something with yeah, her. I thought they were a different movie. Yeah, I know it was off, a different movie. But, and then I was so oh, okay. Well, that that's neat. And it was suddenly very obvious the moment certain conversations came up. It's like, yep, it's her. Well, there was that conversation <laughs> that she was having with Bruce, and he he asked, he directly asked her, how, "How long have you, has it been since you've seen your father?" And you know, she said, "Not for years." And then that that slow zoom in on her face that look away of yeah, like yeah i you know he's dead I've, he's I th- gone i think the problem i had with this is a lot of what i talk about in in these things is you know how an actor acts and in this n- nobody nobody did that you had voice actors but there was no face there was no uh physical movement there was none of that i mean it was done by the lowest bidder in korea and i'm not going to thank whatever korean company did that would you have the same problem with most animated movies? Because there's not a the ones I watch. Like let's let's talk about the uh, the physical action of say Eon Flux or oh, God, Invader so Zim or fucking that old movie Light Years. I mean, at least that mm. one had tits. Um, <laughs> heavy metal. I mean, all of these things. Yes, they're animated, but there there's much more going on. I don't agree with you, but we'll go into that if we ever get to those movies. They're, they're, well, they're I, th- I, I, think, shows, but... I think Heavy Metal was rotoscoped. I think that was filmed yeah. like a movie, Some and then it... they went back and animated well, everything. Only one of those was but, a well, sh- One of the scenes yeah, was Okay, okay. okay. It's, been, it's been a long time. So. Half of those were movies. Half of those were yeah. shows. Okay. All right. I know that Heavy Metal was not a show, <laughs> but Invader Zim, I don't think they've ever made a movie for that. No? It's coming back. As a show. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That poor little, uh, what, what do they call them now? Dwarfs. That poor little dwarf <laughs> who does the voice for Invader Zim. I, I heard uh, an Boom. interview of him and he That's... says, I, I'd, I'd get out, I'd get out of, of the recording and I'd be talking like this because of all the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't, again, again, I think the animation, I love this animation studio. And they also did an anime called The Big O. Which, uh, Dusty, you at least should check out because it is essentially an anime continuation of Batman, but with giant robots. Oh, I, I, yes, I have. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's the same animation studio. They have that same, the lines, the angles, and the art deco style. I loved Bruce Wayne in this. And I think that Conroy, to me, is Conroy's my Bruce. It's not my first Bruce. You know, honestly, it's Michael not my Keaton's last Bruce. my Bruce. Michael Keaton was, yeah. a, was a great Bruce. I, honestly, I am going to be the very ugly duckling on this one. My favorite Bruce Wayne. Is Val Kilmer. No, George Clooney. Oh, dear fucking God. Why? No, I, I, he I is my favorite it, Bruce he's, Wayne. He's, he's not my favorite smarmy. Batman. He is not my favorite Batman. He is my Come favorite on, Bruce Wayne. He looks Wayne. like a millionaire, a billionaire industrialist weapons maker, doesn't he? Yes. I, uh, there's plastic surgery written all over that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I, no, I, I have I a hard Dusty. time. I, I Thank it, you. But he's not my favorite, but I see why you think he fits the part. I he have does. a hard time saying anything positive about the Schumacher movies. Well, no, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I, 
Oh, no, Tom- I have a couple positives. I do have a couple positives on, on that note. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones was really good as, as Two-Face. But he just sort of, again, he did the same thing that he did he in Under Siege. He the scenery, but watching him. He just him, goes in, chews well, the scenery. he's a comic book yeah. villain. He's supposed yeah. yes. to chew the scenery. <laughs> Cesar but, Romero, I miss you. <laughs> but watching him chew the scenery and Jim Carrey chew the scenery at the same exact time, both fighting for dominance in the scenes they're in together, is worth it to me. All right. Yeah. I still think it was a garbage movie. No, I mean, no, it I was agree. It was just bad. It was it was bad. I, I when the the cops are shooting with their revolvers for six or seven hours of oh, Batman God. in the helicopter. Oh, through the rotors, by yeah. the way. Did uh, thank you. Else because I was no, no, I did that as well. That. Yeah, that was really. I was like, I remember I made a comment last night. I, mean, I get it. It's a cartoon, but you can't do that. Yeah, I, eh. I. The Joker was not supposed to be in this movie mm-hmm. because Warner Brothers. Thank God, he was though. I know Warner Brothers did not want to walk over Tim Burton's joker because that had come out a couple years prior to this that was 1989 this was 93 uh the batman returns had just come out a year prior and tim burton was trying to like revitalize the superhero genre and batman was that that like flagship and yeah unfortunately it kind of sank after getting out of port you know i disagree i I honestly i batman is an eternal character that just tells you that if you're a white billionaire industrialist, you too can make a difference. <laughs> but but you can't make a difference with your money. No, you make a difference by putting her in a costume and beating up crooks. Looking at you, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the things that really on, did. Hold on. Like, okay, what? Hold on. What hero would he be? Elon uh, Musk. He'd be yeah. Rocket Man type hero. I mean, he would he would he would definitely fly. That's he, a given. Oh, he'd be the Rocketeer, and and he would yeah. definitely have some sort of he'd be the rich electrical rocketeer. attack. You wouldn't think would he'd be, be an like, electrical attack. No, he wouldn't be a no 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 no. He'd be a fucking villain. He would turn into a villain. No. Yes, he would. No. Look at Elon Musk. He looks like a fucking villain that's he does like not. waiting to come out of this, you know, something one This he, is why you guys don't understand what is, lawful evil is. He okay. Is, he is one tragedy away from being a villain. You're one tragedy. I know I am, but <laughs> <laughs> and you still like me. <laughs> no, no. Elon <laughs> Elon Musk is the closest thing my withered, withered, alcohol ridden soul has to a hero. I love that fucking guy. No, I love him too, but he is one tragedy away from being a villain. He's kind of self absorbed prick. Like yeah. if you're on the level of villains, anyone who take us to the stars, he can eat baby with milk for breakfast. I don't give <laughs> okay. a shit. Okay. Get us I, off I, this fucking planet. <laughs> I think he's closer to being a villain than fucking Steve Jobs was closer to being a villain. And Steve Jobs was pretty close to being a villain. Honestly, I think the two of them, if if Steve Jobs why? was still around. Why? why? Just because articulate your sentence, he took Dusty. Why? everything and stole it and said, oh, that's mine. What? Power walls? Everything. Who had the power wall before him? I'm sorry. What's the power yeah. wall? It's what powers the Tesla. It's his big no, battery. No, 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 no. no I was no, talking no. about Steve Jobs. Steve oh, Jobs. Fuck Steve Jobs. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't care then. Don't care now. I thought you were going after Musk. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I like Musk. But again, sorry about your brand new studio equipment. <laughs> so you made comment before we started talking about how much you like Darkwing Duck. When there's okay. trouble, you call okay. DW. <laughs> Dark Queen and, and so, no, the reason out. the reason Let's why I bring dangerous. I, the reason why I bring this up is because I don't know if you're aware of this. One of the screenwriters for this, Alan Burnett, is the one who came up with the name for Darkwing Duck, who's a spoof of characters like Batman and the Shadow, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. So there, there's, there's, there's an intersection there of one of the the screenwriters for this animated movie and your like of of darkwing duck so speaking of the shadow Mm -hmm. there's an episode in the first season of the animated series called the gray ghost returns and in it batman is um on the case of a series of crimes that are strangely reminiscent of a television show that he watched as a kid called the gray ghost which was like gotham's version of the shadow Mm -hmm. well he tracks down the actor who played the Grey Ghost to get more information, and the actor who played the Grey Ghost is voiced by Adam West. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Tracking down the former actor of a television caped crusader. I thought that was a really nice touch. And if you if you look at the styling of Superman during this this era of animation, 
and Batman, and you notice how they their their bodies they're, they're identical. They have basically. those wedge shaped. They are bodies. identical. Yeah. That's Everyone because has those shoulders, and unless they're like painfully skinny mm-hmm. or like obesely fat, everyone is broad shouldered and narrow waisted, upside down triangle, and in, yeah. and in a suit. The other screenwriter, Martin Pasco, he was a comic book writer and wrote for Superman. So there's where, that's why you kind of see a lot of Superman in this version of uh, Bruce Wayne. Huh. I've never watched the Superman cartoons. Huh. I did watch the ones with like Robin and Raven and all of them, but like casually. I don't remember the name of it. Now, uh, through this whole movie, now I remember sitting, you know, watching it when it came out and I again hadn't watched it until today as a, as another time but i remembered sitting again watching this going god where the fuck is robin at and at doing my notes i completely forgot that the novelization of this uh puts uh, puts robin in college that's why he's no not in this movie at all cuz he's away at college yeah wards are also disposable there's been like 19 yeah. robins yeah, yeah exactly well, also it's nice as to have a batman story yeah, <laughs> he just well, buries another one in the back case. It is, it is a movie that can be connected with the show that people were watching at the time, but it can also be taken out of it. What I liked about it was that you could not directly fit it into an error of time. You always have Batman versus the Joker, and you know, so like we had, we've had many superhero movies that have kind of done this premise where you have the hero and you have a villain and then somewhere in between is the rogue the wild card character that you don't know if good is good or bad like in this we have the phantasm in the spider-man movies i think in spider-man 2 we had um what's the kid harry osborne yeah osborne yeah who you didn't really know if he was going to be good or bad until the the very end yeah, yeah. yeah And even in Spider-Man 3, you know, you, which wasn't that good, but you still had characters like Thomas Hayden Church playing Sandman who could have been good, could have been bad, or Batman Begins, or no, no, the See, Batman, the, the second this, one. This is my Bat, whole Dark argument. Knight, yeah, Dark Knight. With, with, with Eckhart, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I didn't know. Which, this which, is my which, whole yeah. argument. Villain, hero, it really depends on where you're standing. Oh, well... And I, I'm not going to go into yet again sneakers. I'm just saying <laughs> that, that, that is a very real thing. And it all depends on uh-huh. where your perspective is coming from. And the reason that I choose the alignments the way I do is because I'm standing somewhere far away from you two. <laughs> oh, I get that. And it, and it kind of follows up with we've talked you know, about, you know, about, um, you know, the Avengers movies and with Thanos. So as a kid, we all were like, fucking Thanos, he killed everybody. What an asshole. Now, no, as, as I was adults, always in a, f- a fan of Thanos. And now as adults, we're like, no, we get it. We, we get it. We get why you'd do that. Well, personally, I don't. I think Thanos is still a villain. However, I'd just like Matthew, to say that the trains on Thanos' home world ran on time. <laughs> Matthew, <laughs> I do have a question for you then, following this They're up, real. about villains. <laughs> okay. Do you think the Joker is a good villain? Oh, absolutely. An, an archetypal uh, villain. And not necessarily this Joker, but just the Joker. The idea do, do you of the mean, Joker. The character. Oh, yeah, because yeah. there's no ambiguity. He is evil. He's He is evil. He's come from evil before his transformation into super villain. He was thug number six, attempting to move up in his gang. No, the Joker is, is a pure, eloquent evil, and I like that. There's... Very little sympathy that you have with the Joker, but yeah. you can at least appreciate his sense of humor. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I appreciate the Joker's earnestness. Yeah. Um, wherever he is in his madness, he really believes it. Or he just stops caring and moves on to something new. His He's so flippant. His way, his conversation, his style, like he's got this approach to things that even at the time when you think you have him figured out as, oh, he's just being pure evil. But you don't he know. One kid candy and shoots yeah. the one next to it. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the Joker. Yeah. But I like what you mentioned just a little while ago, but what we've all seen is that he will be the Joker, the, just the character in general. And Mark Hamill does an amazing, he's amazing with this. Is that he will be? He will be that maniacal laughter and joking, and then get up in your face. And you even even in an animated setting, you know he is not fucking around. I just really wanted to see 
Mark Hamill's face in the recording studio while he's doing that. He I would have. pay really good money to a see that. A lot of those are out on YouTube. Yeah. You can actually go and, oh. and look them up. He must have And had we'll be s- back after this break. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun oh, doing God. this role. Just the, the, the exclamations, the sounds that he makes. Yeah. Like, just, oh, God, I, you're right. I would love to see him. And it's so strange, like, watching him in The Last Jedi and comparing his car- him there and just picturing that version of Mark Hamill sitting behind a microphone going, <laughs> it's, it is a beautiful mental picture. I would like to state that we've talked a lot, uh, almost 27 minutes now, and we've brought up the Phantasm exactly twice for less than 60 minutes, and that's why, uh, 60 seconds, and that's why this was a bad movie. Well, we've talked about everything else. No, it's actually kind of, that kind of actually goes in the movie because the phantasm, the name of the phantasm is never said in the movie. So we're, we're, we're on par for that. That's. It works in my head. Leave me alone. Okay, I bet a lot of things do. <laughs> yes, um, a lot of things do work in my head. That's no, true. They never call no. the character the Phantasm. The, fa- the name has yeah. never Nobody said throughout the movie. Nobody cares about it. That's why. It's Bruce Wayne's old girlfriend. <sighs> Crimey girlfriend. What? There are. I really like. Rapey, rapey Wayne. <laughs> okay. Wow. Hold on. Where did that? How do you figure? When she throws him. And okay. he all like, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I will admit that. on top of her and like, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, 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 no. Well, first off, first off. Come on, clear, grab her arm and pull her in again. It is clear that she wanted it and she was sending him signals that he wasn't picking up. She comes over and she's like, oh, hey. He goes, I do kung fu. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? It's judo. It's, it's a juice. perfect it's art. Juice. And she's like. You're really stupid. Why yeah. haven't you caught me yet? I wasn't supposed to. Punch, punch, punch. <laughs> You're like, Bruce, there's a hot lady hitting on you. Oh, oh. He doesn't even realize it until he's on top of her. And you can almost see her eyebrows going, you think? I don't. <laughs> like, that's why I don't like uh, this Bruce Wayne. I don't. Uh, well, first off, he was young and stupid at that time. Yeah, he was this like was, he was like twenty yeah, yeah. years old. That was definitely years old. his yeah. pre-Batman era. And as I said in the beginning, if you're that age, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're bringing it back. I do like the something that superhero movies do is that every time they reboot a franchise, they have to show you the fucking origin story. What this movie I did, fucking hate that. Is it kind of included it? Without making it a thing. No, because because everybody knows. Everybody, well, exactly what I was saying. You can take this movie out of the series. Anybody can s- approach this movie. Batman, Joker, Gotham City, crime. Okay, let's go. You can approach this at any time. Now, the origin is shown in bits and pieces, but it's not an origin story movie. And that's what I liked about it. When when Hollywood put back put out Henry Cavill's Superman when that when that came out when they wanted to revamp the DCU and do this whole fucking Marvel thing because they were worried that they're going to lose you know real estate and everything it was cool but I was when they announced that that Superman I was like please dear comic book god in books do, do not, not fucking do, do an, an origin, origin story. story we all uh, we most people know the story of Superman and Batman and Spider Man and so on and so forth more than they know the fucking Bible or whatever religious text that you want to put in there. So please stop doing this. Just like figure we know it and go on next chapter, please. I just wanted to talk about the thugs in this movie. Those are some shitty, shitty thugs. All of Batman's thugs historically have always been shitty. They were really interested in his dental policy and his insurance plans. I fucking hated this movie. Oh. Hope you paid up your insurance, pal. They say that twice. And and there's a there's two dental references. <laughs> I mean, th- these are some serious 40s white thugs. It's They're a like, corrupt city. How's, how's, how's your insurance? You don't get no dental plan, do you, bats? What's more it's important? Cutting. What's so more dumb. what is more corrupt than the insurance industry? Anyway, Dusty. Fucking so, word, dude. <laughs> today, okay, so there was that one scene where he he takes his his cowl and his cape off and he puts it on his his fucking grappling hook thing and puts it out to the to the helicopter, okay? Remember that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the sawhorse. Yeah, on the sawhorse, yeah. I've watched enough like, you know, uh crime computerized shows here you know in the past decade or so 
they wouldn't keep chasing him. They go, oh, hey, thanks for the the DNA and and hair laden like cape. You know, and cowl. this is set 40s, in like so? I know, I mean, yeah. But they had yeah. cell phones in the cars. Come on, they, no, they, they had, had car, car phones. phones. Those aren't cell phones. Those are way different. Those uh-huh. are radios that are attached to buttons <laughs> that look like a, a phone. No, those aren't. Those aren't. Yeah, yeah. It actually is because when you look at the uh, the what were they supposed to be like SWAT cops? Mm-hmm. They had those like pre World War II oil guns. No, I get that, but I, even that was an like old timey copter. But then, yeah. but then you look at then you look at the 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 Bat Jet, and it's like fucking stealthed out. That's because he's a billionaire and he's special, a billionaire weapons yeah. manufacturer. This is remember this is Batman where there are no super characters. There's only characters that either are rich or do not at pivotal moments of their life have access to mental health and thus become supervillains. Yeah. Yeah. I mean he could have helped them. Yeah. He could have helped all of them. He could have helped the whole fucking city. But instead he's gonna go beat people up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I, I know I know the air that it's supposed to be in, but just they're they're little things throughout they're littered that make okay well they're they're doing this this odd you know honestly it's, i i feel that it's it's very solidly set in in the uh it feels in, like in the, the 40s. 50s yeah 40s, yeah, 40s and 50s, 50s. cuz of the costumes just the art deco everything about it okay yeah well do you remember when they were doing the whole world of the future mhm I mean, come on. Whoa, no, I get that. Future. No, I, I get that. But, but, I, that but, but. is based off of the, the World Welcome Fair. Yeah, the world like 1939. I know. I think that was a really cool moment, though. It the was. The car of the future, the look on his face of, that's <laughs> the future Batmobile. Yeah. <laughs> It was like seeing a kid in a candy store. Suddenly the little lightning bolt See, goes that was, off above that his That was head. the whole thing. And I don't, I, I'll say this. I don't like young Bruce Wayne. I never have. Mm-hmm. Young Bruce Wayne is a little shit. I like old Bruce Wayne. I like uh, the Dark Knight Returns Bruce Wayne. So you like the beaten down? What yeah. about need King? to pass on the 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 you know he's yeah, in yeah. the he's got the braces on. He knows he can't fight. It's passing. You on know the, the one that beat the shit out of Superman. Basically, yeah, a yeah, God. yeah. That's the Bruce Wayne I like. Yeah. The one with no quit in him, no whining to his parents, no nothing. Just a fucking force of nature. The as far as a human being can be pushed. And a kryptonite bullet. Yeah, arrows actually. But. What about really old Bruce Wayne? Well, we're talking Kingdom Come era Bruce Wayne. I really I like Bruce Kingdom Wayne. Come yeah. Yeah. Bruce Wayne a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I, whenever Bruce Wayne whines, I just want to punch him in the fucking throat. <laughs> Fuck you. Why don't you whine to your personal fucking servant? Oh my God. I just want to strangle him. I would really like to see another, a, a, a new Batman movie. Fuck it. Let let Michael Keaton reprise his role as that older Batman now because he he has gotten older. He's what sixty. He doesn't have the physique for it. That can be fixed with computers now. With CG. No, no, that can. No, it's not, not Michael Keaton. He might like they did a really good cartoon, and it was the cartoon we should have done. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah, and I mean we're talking we're talking Frank Miller. Yeah, we're talking Sin City. We're talking three hundred. That wasn't my Batman. I wasn't really into that. That was whole... my Batman. The last I Dark Knight. Yeah, I want to say sixteen, seventeen. It was the last year. No, the year before my father died. I was like sixteen or seventeen, and he gave me that comic book, mm-hmm. The Dark Knight Returns. That is my Batman. Is this bitter, fucking gritty old Batman with no quit in him? Well, it's Frank Miller. Yeah. He, he does that. He's yeah, absolute, he, he's a bit gritty. Yeah. Do you have any more production notes on the movie, Dusty? Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. Did Sorry, you happen to have been in there too? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Did you happen to catch the uh, the Millennium Falcon sound in sound in uh, in the movie? No. Yes. So uh, the when when the Joker shoots the robots in the World's Fair in the World's Fair area, the sound of them winding down is the sound of the Millennium Falcon winding down from Empire Strikes Back. I thought that was just the. Uh, I the thought Joker. that was just an, an, an engine. No, uh, that is that pro, is specifically the Millennium. It's specifically the Millennium Falcon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I loved that fight between Batman and the Joker in the miniature city because oh, it was great. It grabbing was, the knife and grabbing the baloney. Yeah. Well, just well, he fucking beats him with a oh like baloney. <laughs> I, that was a nice little moment. You can go ahead and over, say red dildo. He, he just beat him sees, with a red dildo. You look over, you see baloney, you see knife. He zooms it on knife, turns back, hits hey. him with a baloney. And you're like, yes, Joker. But that scene where they're fighting in the, the miniature city, 
it looked like, it looked like a Godzilla. giant robot fight. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It to me, it looked more like Godzilla. <laughs> I was yeah, hoping yeah, yeah, for more Godzilla. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I bet the planes and the fights and the punches. Uh, yeah, it was good. I I liked it. What I liked a lot about the 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 fight scenes because there were a few fight scenes in this movie. What I liked about it was that because Bruce Wayne was fledgling Batman in this movie, uh, he would get his ass kicked a lot, yeah. and it showed that he is mortal because a lot of times even in the animated movies he he or and even in this tv series he kind of gets away scot-free like maybe a scratch maybe a black eye under the cowl but never like he he never really gets his ass handed to him and in this movie he does multiple times it reminded me a lot of the first season of daredevil See, I still haven't watched That's that. So good. I, know, I yeah. know. Can we talk about how they're just killing off both of those just for a sec? Fucking Disney. Mm. I love the took, Punisher. They took back the license from Netflix and they're taking the catalog. Yeah, and I, I get that. That's fine, but why stop the the show? Because I I mean I understand there's reams I, and I have no, of paperwork no and excuse. contracts. I think it's and, terrible. Yeah. But I mean, that's what you just built it off of. And if you're gonna be so just you know give and, and take with it then you're being shitty yeah warner brothers kind of slid this under the radar the entire movie because at the time it batman was show. batman was still listed for kids so they said you know what we we know that kid this is listed for kids and there's only going to be a select amount of adults that are really going to go watch this and those that are going to watch it, you know, they're going to be watching it at, 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 at you know a later time. So let's put in as let's push the envelope as much as we can. So the moratorium on blood and sex and death was pretty much lifted, you know, it, from this time frame at least. Uh, they pushed everything, and that would not get surpassed again until uh, Under the Red Hood and The Dark Knight Returns, and then A Killing Joke, which was I think last year. A Killing Joke. <laughs> <laughs> That is one reason I didn't see it when it came out, because it was marketed towards kids. And I like the cartoon, which the cartoon was actually fairly adult in its subject matter. And I was like, well, I don't want to see a kid's version of this. All of the marketing was like, Nick Toons yeah. said, yeah, come on, see Batman on the movie screen. I'm like, I, I have no intention of seeing that. And then I watched it last night. It's like, this is it's a, it's dark. Not it what is. I was thinking it was going to be. And it yeah. was animated for best animated feature at the Annie Awards back in 1984. It was uh, animated? Yeah. Nominated? Nominated yeah. and what did I say? You said it was animated for the best animated feature oh, award. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> it was nominated, thank you for the correction, for the best animated feature at the Annie Awards in 1994. It ultimately lost to The Lion King. Well, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on. I'm sorry you didn't like it, Matthew. You know, I, I thought you would. I I like Batman. Yeah. I, I do. Yeah. I just here, here's the thing, and I don't I don't want to sound like pretentious or anything. I just I don't think that should have been on that list. That huh. that wasn't uh, like here, here, here's the up. thing. Here here's what we're learning about democracy, and you know, one person, one vote. <laughs> well, well hold sometimes on. fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we may not want to do that in the future. If you're one of our patrons, you get two votes. Yes, you just do. So you know, yeah. This did have a budget of six million dollars. Okay. So nineteen ninety three, what probably eight, nine million now, maybe. Um it only scored one point one million on its opening weekend because it, you know, they they flushed it out and was like, Hey, here's a fucking Batman movie, go watch it. But because of the cult following that it garnered o- over the years, the gross on it though was five point six. So it, so it almost made it back, back. But in the the following years, it's create it's gone, but has a such a cult following that VHS sales and DVDs and now you know rentals off of Amazon have put it into a you know fucking atmospheric level. Yeah, there's a reason people voted on this one for us. It, I was mind. surprised. I don't yeah. see it. I honestly I do, but- okay. I I have very 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 fond <laughs> memories of seeing Michael Keaton's Batman. In the theater, my uh-huh. dad wanted to go see it because it fuck all Michael Keaton. It was Jack Nicholson. I've he, seen all s- more subtlety in Animaniacs. I mean, this, this, <laughs> that's fine. I, I but me, I you know, and 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 one of my dearest and closest friends, her Batman is the Kevin Conroy Batman and the Mark Hamill. She loves them. Uh, I like them, but 
my my Bruce Wayne, like I said, is George Clooney. Um, my Batman is probably going to be a, a tie between Keaton and Christian Bale. And my my personal Joker that I this my favorite is Heath Ledger. I will note that Conroy and Hamill have between them more logged Batman time. Oh, by far than anyone else ever. By far, they are that Conroy. If you just look at his IMDb page, he is known for this playing Batman and this playing Batman mm-hmm. and this playing Batman and this playing Batman. He is Batman. He he is the modern. He is what so many generations today think of as Batman he, because of the cartoons amazing and the video at games. It. Yeah. And Hamill's Joker is like to me, to me, he's yeah. to me. He's a nothing. I don't see why, why it, why that connected. It has to be a nostalgia thing. It has I, to be it, because you guys grew up with it. I was a t- tween, I guess when I got into it, like the first nine, Batman that I got really into, impressionable. the first Batman that I got into was actually Keaton's Batman. It blew yeah. my mind. And then the cartoon hit a spot for me that the, yeah, the cartoon came about 92. Yeah. Well, the cartoon yeah. has, I mean, it's the backgrounds. It, it's all the, the, the matte animation that they draw against that. It, it's don't get me wrong. It's beautiful work. I just Absolutely liked, stunning. I like the portrayal of Batman and Bruce Wayne as they were different enough to be almost individual characters that shared an ancestry in the show and growing i think it was because of the continual exposure to them because with keaton you got two movies with adam west you get what two three seasons and even i mean come on it was the 60s it, yeah, i've watched bad. all those on nick at night yeah. as a kid you know 12 Christian, o'clock at night on friday nights with bale we got three movies over 10 years yeah but with with kevin conroy it's just constant exposure to him as batman that image of bruce wayne sets in your mind well that's that just means there's that's a lot hundreds of, of episodes i, I agree and, but that doesn't make it good yeah. okay i don't think what you're saying makes it bad is the deal here i think bat, that batman to me that is batman and it is weird when you're just like your batman is bad because it's not my batman no I mean, no I'm i'm saying your <laughs> batman is bad because He's not gropey. the Dark Knight. He's gropy. He's poorly written. He has the vocal inflection of crying or determined. So what? What? Where? Where I is think, this, I think where Nathaniel's is this head is going to explode. No, it's not. I just completely disagree with you. <laughs> oh, I right. see you... so much more nuance in that in in Conroy's performance than I've seen in any other Batman. Yeah, except but that's that's for in. I get, except for maybe Heath Ledger, but he did a very no, no, sorry. Um, he did a psychotic. His Joker. Joker, I think, had more nuance than any of the others. Oh, except very for much. So. Hamill. No, so it's like, I, see, I disagree with you because. I, well, oh, hang on, I'd watch a Hamill Joker show in a hot. Well, second. so would <laughs> I, but I, I think, and and this this is where this is where there's the the staunch difference that comes into play between an animated movie and a film movie. Because with with Heath Ledger's performance of of the Joker, there's there's so much that he can do with facial expressions, ticks. Uh, there's so much background that he can do. Where where an animated movie of the of the early '90s could not do. It could not give the, is the same kind of spotlight that a film movie. Oh no could no no! Do. I'm not talking about Hamill just in this movie. I'm talking about Hamill as the Joker throughout time throughout the animated series throughout the fucking video games throughout everything like mark hamill owns the joker he his voice his vocal inflections just the way that you can hear the sneer in his voice uh, it's beautiful but dusty do you have anything for us on the movie out anything else no actually no i'm i'm good okay well let's take this to the gaming table okay all right Hi, this is Matthew. Thanks for listening. We wanted to take a moment to talk to you about uh, one of our sponsors, Guardian Games. Guardian Games has been with us since the very beginning of this show. Guardian Games is Portland's premier game store. They have magic miniatures, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of RPGs, all the gaming swag, anything you could possibly want for your gaming experience. If you're ever in Portland and looking for a gaming store, Guardian Games is the biggest, most diverse store in Portland. You definitely owe it to yourself to go to Guardian Games.
So bringing this to the gaming table, mm, Dusty, tell us about these characters. <laughs> mm, yes, Dusty. we have <laughs> Matthew and <laughs> Bob. Is it us? You know what I'm about? Give it us. God damn it, I am the terror that flaps in the night. You tell me about this goddamn movie. Uh, that was a faps in the night. <laughs> <laughs> the terror that faps in the night. <laughs> so every prepubescent kid. <laughs> oh, take God. a shower. <laughs> Are we going to devolve and talk about Kevin Conroy again on this? Or, cause, I mean, I'll talk about whatever I damn well okay. want to talk about. So, try that. And I'd, like to try, and I'd that. like to try it too. So we have Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne Batman. Ah, uh, shit. Is it good? It's not bad. They're trying my Cali Mocho, which is Coke and wine mixture. Yeah. It's, it's I just, fucking hate wine. Okay. Yeah. So this was the thing that, <laughs> that I, 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 we used I, to make fun of you for. Used. Still. <laughs> I would have gone. Actually, there's a little bit of history of that. that. That Us making fun okay. of that drink in a fun, friendly manner almost ended this show. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got upset. It's like, fuck you, you got guys. got butt hurt. <laughs> I did. I accept that. No, that's fine. That's fine. That was before we... There were darker times. <laughs> so now Kevin Conroy, who, played, who plays the voice of Bruce Wayne and Batman, the legendary... Kevin Conroy, who is, as we discussed hey, Dusty, earlier. Tell us what else he's been known for. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else? I Batman. mean, you say legendary, but it's not like he's Peter Cullen or anybody. You know no, I mean? no, this is true. Uh, so Kevin Conroy. <laughs> like, if, if, if you put him just, like, talking into a mic in character, and then you put Peter Cullen talking into a mic in character, who do you think you'd recognize first? Optimus Ooh. Prime or Batman? Well, Ooh. that depends. God. Well, okay, sorry, Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime. Yeah. However, that's... Frank Welker is a much more versatile actor. Let's put that's, Frank Welker on. There, there are some people where you, you, it doesn't matter what v- character they do. You are going to James Earl Jones is another one. You hear his voice, you know who that is. James Mason. I'm doing it again. I'm you sorry. Hear his Go ahead. voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking on him for no discernible reason. No, it's fine. Reason. James Mason, you hear his voice. You know exactly who that is. I don't is. know who that is. Watch some real movies. Um, this is another person that you just, you hear his voice, you know who it is. I know she didn't even tell me who that was. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch some movies. Um, so he's he doesn't know. Done, I don't think he knows. I, I do. This is just an actor that you should know. He's done so like So what's a, he been in? Yeah, name three. I can't off the top of my head. <laughs> Good, because you assholes did this to me a few episodes back. So Kevin Conroy has been, he he, he started off as a, in 1980 as a, he was a daytime soap opera. He was in, he was in Another World. He was in, uh, he did some theater pieces. He did some Midsummer Night's Dream. But his biggest thing has been Batman. That's where he, that's kind of lawful evil. All he's really done. I would say lawful neutral. I mean, he's done movies, but he's done like little bit parts, like Stephen, the bartender guy. Frequently, he's done bit parts as Batman. (laughs) Yeah, he was in Cheers. He did two episodes in Cheers. Yeah, yeah. was he Batman? (laughs) No, he was Daryl Mead, not Batman. Some dude in the background, probably one of those. Uh, His most recent movie, uh, actually, it was an episode of Shark Week. He did. (laughs) He was a narrator for Lair of the Mega Shark. Probably as Batman. I just <laughs> want to gouge my eyes out. So, okay. Oh, wait, wait. In 1996, he, he played in The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest as Hard Man. <laughs> hard Man, you say? Hard Man, yes. So, are you guys familiar with Hard Gay? Oh, this is a whole... I'm listening. A, hard Gay is a cosplayer. Uh, I think it's Japanese. I thought this was going in a whole other so direction. Did I. He is a well-known character on the cosplay scene at all the big conventions. And, you know, I'm just going to put some links in. He's he's a cosplayer called Hard Gay. Yeah. Okay. But, so even though he's mostly only known for... I mean, he's had a little bit parts here and there and done other things cool. But, uh, honestly, as someone that that is... In in Hollywood, I think that he's been he's cut his teeth on Batman for decades. Cool, good for him. He's made a lot of money. That's his bread and butter. Yeah, he's made a lot of money. People know him. He he goes to conventions. He has a cult following for 
his voice. So good on him. I'm not putting him down, but it, you know, you're you're questioning like, what's he been in? Batman, bat. Everything is Batman. So I would say lawful neutral because it's simply mm. and okay. Well, hold on. Going from this movie, if we're just going from the movie alone, still lawful neutral. He's he's got moments where he could bring, where he could no, do wait. what I consider. No wait, we're both wrong. He's absolutely operating outside the laws of his society. He is not lawful. He just has a code. Well, okay. no, he has a no, promise. No, we've we've waffled on this. Okay, before. yeah, because he doesn't. He I hasn't like said his code code we're, we're saying it's the society you live in, right? You know, that he is. He is. He is cordoned. He he is sponsored by the law. He's sponsored by one member. Yeah, well, yeah, only one member. They they have a fucking spotlight that they use to summon him on top of the law building. But they also <laughs> used it in this movie specifically to yes. entrap him. That so. is, but, but then again, that also requires... The cops shoot out him an awful lot for him to be yeah, this sponsored. Is yeah, there's only one person that's like, fuck you, I'm not going to go get him. And that's Commissioner Gordon. I know. And again, this is this is where it comes. It's the dichotomy that we've had in previous episodes with previous previous established franchises is thinking of the movie versus thinking of the larger character yeah, yeah, or the yeah. larger I'd say in this movie yeah. though he can't be lawful I'd say in this movie he's fucking chaotic yeah, yeah. he is chaotic yeah. in this movie yeah so so chaotic neutral then that's it I would say chaotic good because he never I'd go with neutral chaotic neutral is an unpredictable character he Batman is unpredictable, is unpredictable. Batman is very unpredictable in this movie Batman is predictable okay. as fuck okay. even you, in this but, but movie you just, but you just said to the point it, that Joker you're, comments you're not, multiple times in this movie about his predictability Batman even in this movie and everything Batman does except maybe the Dark Knight or Dark, Dark Knight Returns. Returns but I think I think the yeah. Joker is the he, other kind of chaotic neutral. He's on the Joker other end. Chaotic so he, evil. so everything because they are polar opposites, but they see exactly what the other one is doing. So he can he can counter every move. Well, That's why he's predictable to the Joker, but to everybody else in that world around him, he's cops, not predictable. The, he was predictable to the cops. Everyone mm. in that fucking city knows where Batman's going to be and what he's going to do. Like, that's how the cops found him. That's how the cops followed him. The cops were like, he's going there because there's fucking Batman. Well, he doesn't yes. fit true neutral either. He does He's not lawful neutral. And if he's not chaotic neutral, what do you got? What I got is a broken ass alignment system that it's hard to fit a character into. So normally? Principled. Normally. He's principled. He's principled. If you're, if you're going to the, the dark side of Palladium. Because principled is lawful fucking good, Palladium's version of it. But it's also lawful good to a fault. And Batman has, Batman has a very strict code. Like, no, he does. Yeah. And, but to even, the point that even he won't kill the Joker. And he yeah, tries and, to stop her from killing Alfred the Joker. Alfred even makes a yeah. comment. That, Spoiler, that he eventually he, does. That he walks, yes, I agree, that he walks that line uh, of, you know, staring into that precipice, into that abyss, and he walks that line every single night. That was, yeah. you know, Alfred made a very good point of that as he's standing in the Bat Cave looking over into the abyss. One could say then that his walking that line is a prime prime candidate for him being lawful neutral i want to i actually want to hear what uh our listeners think about this one because this, yeah, this yeah, is something this great this yeah. is something i i i'd like to de delve into more than we're going to with the time limits we I, I have. do want to say though i cut you off dusty That's okay what do you think his alignment is and why uh i think he is chaotic neutral and i said and why <laughs> um I think he is unpredictable. I think he's very unpredictable, but I think he he has that code that we've talked about. Uh, he has that set of rules. He has that neutrality that that puts him there. But I think he 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 is fucking chaotic with everything. All right. I I, it's, it's I, not, I think you 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 guys never put into the context of the society they're keeping. Uh, well, I will agree with that. I can agree with that. I think that people can be lawful and yet not uphold the laws of their society absolutely not no i think robin no. hood was anti-lawful he's chaotic good there's a word for it there, there's an alignment that, for it for example uh where rats in D D, where rats live underneath the dregs of society they do not obey the laws of society but where rats are lawful so they break that rule no their society demons their society the where rat society so then 
would could someone be their own society? No. Why not? Because a society, by very definition, is more than one person. Okay. Well, United States government, fuck your army of one campaign. Well, yeah. <laughs> fuck any advertising campaign, really. I, I don't I, agree with you, but I'm not going to argue it. Do you see where I'm getting at, though? I, I, I mean, you have to be see, judged against I see what, what your society saying, is. But I think that Batman has his own code, and his code is that society is flawed. But he has his own code that parallels it, but isn't congr- that, but isn't equal it. So it's like he has his code and society has this code and he works within society to change it. Well, you can be, or it's like, uh, Oh, a good example. There was a television show from the nineties. that wasn't that fucking good. Ooh, ooh, but wait, it had a we're good, looking hold at on. this wrong. It was called uh, dark justice and dark justice. The premise was the character, the main character was a judge. He was, this very lawful good, well, mostly lawful neutral in his attitudes, but he was a judge. And every episode he would unfortunately have to go with the handings of what the legal system and frequently criminals would get away from the, I from the jury system, remember this from the system. And then he would take on the guys that vigilante at night and ride a sweet ass fucking motorcycle and hunt yes. those criminals down. Yes. Cause, and, and the phrase was, Justice may be blind, but it can see in the dark. Okay, we're looking at this wrong. What is Bruce Wayne's alignment? Bruce, Bruce Wayne's Wayne? lawful good. I I would say so as well. I because would say that Bruce Wayne is, yeah. He's a philanthropist. Yeah. I mean, you have to be as a weapons yeah. manufacturer. Otherwise, <laughs> you have terrible PR. <laughs> um, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So, we're, yeah, we're, we're looking at uh, Batman is the same as Bruce Wayne and dealing with society that way. So in the realm of the super, which he's frequently works in, in the justice league and Mm -hmm. whatnot, you know, dealing with villains and other superheroes. What is Batman? He is chaotic neutral. I would say he's chaotic. Good in the super world as Batman, Bruce Wayne, lawful, good Batman, chaotic, good. You can see it. And I know this is taking it outside the context of the movie. But, but it's good. <laughs> well, whenever he deals with like Superman or the Ju- Justice League crap, he's always I'm doing it my own way, yeah, which would be a chaotic. And, and, and I was going to kind of go on that because you you can you can be good and you can still do what you need to do to get the job done. Yeah, chaotic, good. Yeah, and okay, so I'll, yeah, okay, I'll agree with that because there. I mean, even in even in Justice League, I mean, there's he in the comics and in the animated series. He makes it a point that everybody know that if Superman goes nuts, he will shoot him with a kryptonite bullet just so, to make sure that he keeps the status quo. You have to keep keeping the status quo. Keeping the status quo is the opposite of chaos. Chaotic good is against the status quo. But it's quo. just. But it's that he, he. It is he will do it on a. Yeah whim and i think that i don't know that it's status quo i think it's a greater good well okay thing. okay thank I, you that's... i don't think batman's up for the greater good he's up for the law because batman no no, no that's all, batman wants to bring them to justice no that would be judge dread no batman brings them to justice <laughs> nice. he does not kill batman captures and brings to the police that's, That's true. his thing. Okay. He captures and brings to the police. And what happens yeah. with that? What kind of due process do they have in Gotham where some guy can just dump you off in the fucking jail yard and they're like, there you go. Okay. <laughs> You're guilty because Batman brought that's, you that's in. That's why they keep getting out because you know, he, he keeps dropping them in the prison yard and they're like, well, 24 did, hours. Did, did anyone read you your rights? Okay, I don't know how late we're going to go <laughs> did, in did, this. did someone serve a search warrant? All right, you're all right. No, you're the gone. holding for 24 hours without, yeah. you know, and then you have to release if you don't don't have a well, What happens is if they It's called uh, rid of habeas corpus. If they don't have a lawyer, they get released if unless they need psychiatric evaluation. They don't get sent to a therapist, and so they get sent to Arkham, Arkham yeah. where they break out and Batman has to yeah. go capture them again. All right, it's, moving on. <laughs> moving on. We have the wait. Did we get an alignment for Batman? Yeah, <laughs> we 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 each. I don't know. Mine is lawful neutral. I don't think we have an agreement because I think he wants to I'm uphold chaotic the neutral. law. He just has outside of the law ways of doing it. I can see your argument. I I see everybody's for me, argument. For me, it all hinges on one his code of honor and two the fact that he always always. Always brings them to justice. See, don't try and move yeah. it along here because there's not really a lot of characters here to go into. So let's go ahead and keep arguing yeah. this. <laughs> no, I, I, I see it. Honestly, and I'm willing to change my mind, lawful neutral for him as Batman. As yes. Batman. As Batman. Bruce Wayne, good Lawful guy. good. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we have Dana Delaney as Andrea Beaumont. Do we want to separate them as well? Oh, from Phantasm, Phantasm and, to her? Yeah. Sure. We're all, we, we've are we already set precedent. All right. God. Mm. Uh, I I think she... Whoa, whoa, hold on. What's Dana Delaney done? Dana Delaney's been... Actually, she's been in a lot of movies. Uh-huh. Uh, she, anything of decent size? That's that's what I'm going to check on. I, I don't want to see Toad Three, Tarot, Starch <laughs> Pond. No, 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 wait, no, wait, no, wait, no that no. sounds awesome. <laughs> Have you ever watched what was it? Uh, Troll Two? No, it was something about killer beavers. <laughs> Zombie beavers. Zombie beavers. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> she on my watch list. So <laughs> good. She was in Tombstone. Oh, okay, that counts. Uh, the horrible Hollywood adaptation of Anne Rice's um, uh, Exit to Eden. She was the dominatrix. <laughs> wait, 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 the one with Rosie O'Donnell? Yes, and, and Dan Aykroyd, yes. <laughs> See, you guys are like, oh, you I never watch that, you I never cannot. watch movies, Matthew. Why are you even on this show? You don't even know what you're doing. And I'm like, well, shit like that exists. Okay, and, I just want to say a year and it took a year and a half, folks, dear listeners, one year and a half for that movie to be mentioned on this podcast. <laughs> and I'm sorry, and that's the last time it'll be mentioned yes. anywhere for the next time. Ever. But she's she's done she's done a lot of uh, TV and animated. She's uh, she was in and she does uh, she has a character in NCIS if you watch that at all, which is is a show that I did like. But she's also been in the one with the cute goth girl. Yes, Abby. Okay. Yes, yeah. uh, she was in the TV series in the mid '90s, Wing Commander Academy, based <laughs> off of the. Yep. Uh, Wait, there, there's a Wing Commander. Series? Yes, Wing Commander Academy. <laughs> How many seasons? It was only 13 episodes. Episodes. So less than episodes. One. Yes. Episodes. Um, <laughs> she was in. Can't uh, imagine why. Such a good franchise. Always seems to do well. Wasn't that the death knell for Matthew Lillard? L- Lillard or whatever? He, no, I uh, think that was that was the the Scream movies, I no. think. Matthew Lillard is currently doing an extremely successful D&D campaign. Yes, he is. Uh, he's actually started a new product that is really expensive. However, it's geared towards a game master who wants a complete everything in a box. Everything you need, pre-made encounters, all that wonderful stuff. It actually looks fucking cool. I really miss him. I'm, yeah. I'm glad he's still doing things. I liked him in... And not working in, at a Burger King or something. I know. I, <laughs> I liked him in... House on Haunted Hill, Thirteen Ghosts, Thirteen Ghosts, yeah, that 13 was really Ghosts. good. And I liked him in Wing Commander. I liked him. Uh, in, I loved him in Wing Commander. Wing Commander was uh, he was the best part of Wing Commander. He was I the only him, part of Wing Commander uh, in Scooby Doo. He, yeah, he in fact now is Shaggy. He yeah, took yeah. over the character Shaggy. He does the voice and all the cartoons and all the things. So much like Kevin Conroy is Batman, he's Shaggy. <laughs> Matthew Lillard he's is Shaggy. Also an amazing yeah. artist. If you, oh, yeah. He, yeah. he's like a. V- Wow, kind of Matthew artist. Lillard. If you're listening to this, we'd love to get you on the podcast sometime. Oh, that Please. would be great. Come on up to Portland, we'll Oregon. Do, we'll do 13 or, Ghosts because or, I love no, no, that. No, 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 no. Crash on my no, futon. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> That'd be great. Send us that game and we will do a special episode on it. Yeah. We'll, let's, let's, we'll tag him. So, anyway, Andrea. Oh, yes. Andrea. Uh, and, Andrea slash Phantasm. Oh, God. Uh, she, she is, as Andrea, she is lawful good. Sure. Uh, no. What do you mean? I mean, her daddy okay, is her this. Dad. No, no, she no, didn't no. Wait. know. She didn't know until. Oh, didn't the she? Very end. Didn't she? she Come did, on. She she maintained that she did then not she's know. Awful fucking stupid. <laughs> well, come on. You got it. She's like fucking seventeen years old in this movie. Come on. She's a kid. Wait, wait, wait. Bruce Wayne's in his twenties, and this is what uh, I don't right, think uh, she was 17. seventeen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. What? Yeah, yeah, it's there, the there, same does, there is, frame. in fact, a legal difference. <laughs> I think, okay, so she's yeah. okay. She's of age. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's go ahead and go with that. Um, <laughs> well, we 40s. don't know what the age in Gotham is, yeah, or the, <laughs> what it was in the forties, right? <laughs> Gothabama. No, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. we like Gothabama stand. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's lawful good as 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 Miss Beaumont. No, no, I, I, no. She lied to Bruce about I, what? Really? No, I mean up until that lie, and she then left, and they didn't see each other until she came to kill. She was lawful good. She did not know anything about her father. Lawful does not lie. I'll be honest. I don't really see much of a reason to separate her characters because Fair. I think okay. the, she, the phantasm, was an extension of her. Whereas Bruce, uh, it was a forced extension. Well, well uh, chaotic uh, neutral then. I mean, just like Batman was forced, a forced extension of Bruce Wayne because she's practic- she's a villain. She's chaotic yeah. neutral. 
Yeah. Um, I would say lawful evil. No, yeah, can't. It? Oh, God, it's, gonna, it's so hard. Because that man only dates villains. <laughs> really? It's right true. Yeah. 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 He only dates villains. So, so if, if they're nailing, she's a villain. So. <laughs> Honestly, so they're gonna have okay. Would hold they have on. chaotic or lawful neutral? Here's a kids? question. Here's a question. What would you say Dexter Morgan's alignment is? Who? The Dexter serial Morgan, killer. The, the serial killer in the show Dexter who only kills serial killers. Oh, uh, he's lawful evil. Then I would say that she's lawful evil. God, that makes my brain explode. Yeah, because uh, he's, she, he's she, very she, lawful she evil. basically does the same thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, so then we have that's, that, that that's show, my pick. Yeah. So Stacy Keach lended his voice for her father, and he also did the voice of wait, being wait, wait. the phantasm. Stacey? Yeah, Stacy Keach, the guy, the actor. That's a dude's name. Oh, okay. Sorry, Matthew. It was, Man, uh, he must have had a bad time in grade school. That poor guy. <laughs> uh, then we have Abe. He was NPC. Then we have Abe Vigoda as Salvatore Valestra. NPC, NPC. Okay. But, but Abe Vigoda. Yeah, Abe Vigoda. Rest in peace, my friend. Mark Hamill as the Joker. <laughs> chaotic Neutral. fucking evil. Yeah. Yeah, chaotic evil. <laughs> he is, he is, is the, the definition. Yeah. He is the definition of chaotic evil. You know how they hold up Robin Hood for chaotic yeah. good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. chaotic evil. Matthew. Right, that's it. What? Where are we going next? Where's your hook? Oh, well, obviously, um, she killed the Joker. Because the Joker yeah, that goes was a into the mist spread. with her. So where we pick up with the Joker's dead? Uh, no, it's, she didn't kill the Joker. The Joker got away from her. Batman has to go find her. There's only one story where the Joker's died. Well, hold yeah. on, hold on. Remember, when we play a game, we're taking it off the, the rails. At the end of yeah. the movie. At the yeah. end of the movie, yeah. and we're going to break away from so, canon usually. Well, what, what happens at the end of this movie is uh, she uses her magical teleporting smoke. and That's weird. Pulls the Joker in with her. And then they're just gone, even though he steps into the smoke. So she has some sort of cruise ship teleportation ray. And the Joker's out there somewhere. Batman has to find it. But here's the problem with with playing this. You can't play Batman unless it's just you. I disagree. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But okay. keep going. The, you know, there's not a lot. You, you have to find the Joker. Or you could do a uh, one of the uh, Japanese role-playing games, and you have to go find the girl. Okay. Like my my boyfriend is a bird kind of RPG. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I didn't have a lot for this. I didn't it's like Batman. it. It's one person. Fucking watch the next episode. It's Batman. You know, watch anything. Watch the cartoon. Watch the movies. Watch the nineteen sixties show. Yeah, I can get. They, they, any, don't, yeah. they don't need me Read for this the one. Comics. Batman is this year eighty years old in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Batman is older than. Well, not all of us combined, unfortunately, because you guys are old. <laughs> You're not that much younger than we are. I'm a spring chicken You're compared like to you two years younger focus. than we are. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh. Those two years. <laughs> they were but you're more years. broken than we are. Yeah, they, older. they they gave him that swimmer's body that he's gimping around <laughs> in right now. Well, and I think you lost your hair well before we did. Uh, that was you speak for yourself. <laughs> well, that was anyway. <laughs> games to play for Batman. Yeah, Dear been, God. I mean, okay, first off, we don't really need to talk about who Batman is because I'm assuming if you're listening to this, you fucking know. We it's, don't need an origin again, story. Like I just said a second ago, Batman's now 80 years old. The character has existed longer than anyone listening to this has probably been alive. It is part of our collective consciousness as Americans and possibly as Earth people who are into comics like batman exists. anywhere there's electricity yeah. they know who batman is yep so you know that batman is the caped crusader he's a vigilante he fights against crime but he uses his own rules while still working within the system he doesn't try to take the government down instead he tries to take the criminals down and bring them to the established system of justice which is kind of fucked up because Nothing's going to change if you keep doing that. Yeah, you have to kill them. Otherwise, they just turf them back out again. But that's what makes Batman stupid. keep going because oh. he's always. I like that. that. It yeah. makes him stupid. <laughs> it makes him stupid. But that's what makes that's what gives the character something to always do. Much like Doctor Who is nothing but regurgitated plot lines and villains. Batman is regurgitated plot lines and villains. Well, he's rich. Yeah. He's going to get bored if he doesn't do fucking something. We have. Uh, so many different systems that can do Batman because uh, something else about Batman is that Batman has had different eras. Yeah. 
you have the zany there's era even victorian batman there's vic well just, i like the japanese victorian one that was a short that was done here a couple of years ago it was yeah. fucking amazing well i'm samurai-esque these are those are interesting yeah. and, and those are a good example of eras that have gone beyond the established batman canon but just the established batman that we know from commercial media has gone through different eras of time We've talked about a few of them already on this episode. We've briefly mentioned what many of our parents would know as the Batman of television of the 60s. Camp. Adam West and Burt Ward and Cesar Romero and Merge. Bang. Boom. Burgess fucking Meredith uh. and all of those, those, those actors from that era that were sailing on the ship out of fame and having that... That you know that television time of zaniness and fun. That's an era of Batman that you don't really get to see that much. Although I must I have say, it. what <laughs> I have it. Yeah, well, I tried watching the movie last. I grew up on them. So oh, that shark that that, I, that comes up and bites his leg. We made it bomb. halfway through the movie. <laughs> I couldn't finish the movie. I was that like, was great. Oh, Come I've on. never I've never seen the movie. I've only seen the show. That's a Batman that we could play. We could oh, do easily. the. We could instead do the Batman of the animated series, which we've seen, which is from this movie which is the art deco style the that weird batman of the 50s but stylized for today in that's my favorite batman that is my favorite batman but there's also the dark or at knight. least age i'd say the dark knight is uh an, an era of batman mm -hmm. that dark gritty frank miller version of batman We've also got, you know, the the action hero from the Justice League, but we've also got the detective. And then Batman has so many different incarnations of things that you could want from a game. If you wanted something like the pow, wham, slam, kapow, batcopter thing. Play it with Munchkin. You could, <laughs> you could do Savage Worlds. You yeah. could do something super pulpy, super campy, super silly tune. Something that... Yuck, Plays the game up for yucks and laughs. I'm I'm still saying Munchkin. The the ridiculous things they have are perfect <sighs> for the for Munchkin's the, great for the bat copter Munchkin. and batarang and bat rope and bat copter and yeah. Munchkin is one of a handful of games that is banned from my house. Why? I hate it. It's the worst fucking game ever. I hate it this show, but I don't ban it, man. Come on now. Yeah, I, my, nope, no Munchkin at my house while I'm here. But I still talk about it, right? You can still talk about All it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Before we delve too deep into it, I, I want to give a shout out to Everyone, there there are a massive number of people who responded to a post that I put out on Twitter and on Facebook. And yeah, on it was Plus, it was pretty goddamn amazing uh, getting suggestions for Batman games. There were more games than I could really go through and more names that I feel like calling out here. It would take a while. You Thank have you, everyone three, right? What I'm I have assuming. a number of games that we're going to talk about, but I want to thank everybody for commenting and please follow us on Twitter. We're going to be asking for many more suggestions for our coming movies. We'll talk. Thank you again. It was a great discussion and I actually learned a lot about games. So check out our Twitter and see what uh, you might think. And if you can find some games that, out there that are suggestions, I wrote down a handful of them from that discussion. Oh, Isaac commented on that. Craig Payne, Christopher Street. Stephen Orenja, Gremlin Legions. I'm sure that's his given name. Yeah. So let's talk about Batman as a party game instead of a single player game. Yeah. Because it, there's a lot of single player games out there, surprisingly enough. But I don't want to talk about those. Yeah. You could, you could do it with a party. You could you could have Batman. You could have Robin. You could have Nightwing. Yep. You could have you know all in that party. That'd yeah. Be we, fun. We, we've had too many single player games. Yeah. Let's not do let's that. Let's talk about a party. All right. Apocalypse powered games create a style of play where you have a group of players at the table but they're not all a party they are creating and crafting the story but not necessarily always as a team there are moves that each player has and it's a traditional role-playing game ultimately it's just got a very streamlined skill system but it's a game where you can have one player playing John McClane, the guy with a gun, and you can have uh, one player playing Master Blaster from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and then you could have, you know, someone else playing Captain Mal Reynolds kind of style. Each one has their own approach to their goals. So, and you, to so you're, ba things. You're, you're basically describing League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. 
Not where I was going, but yes, okay. yes, that that could totally work in an apocalypse world style game. You have it is what is called an asymmetrical style of play, where every player sitting at the table has a different way of interacting with the story. So if we're going to run a Batman game with something powered by the apocalypse, think about it this way: one of you is Batman, one of you okay. is Robin, one of you is Commissioner Gordon, one of you is the Joker. And the GM is providing all the things that are happening in the games, and you're making moves against each other, role-playing, but not necessarily as a team. Right. Mm -hmm. And it can work. I've seen it work very well, especially even in long-term games. There's a game called Urban Shadows, which I think could pull it off. Urban Shadows is meant to be a powered by the apocalypse approach to the uh, world of darkness, you could totally apply that shit to Batman. I mean, Batman, make him a fucking vampire. And now the Joker, make him a a hunter, a a trickster god or something. That kind of thing. You could totally reskin almost any game for any flavor of Batman. Now, before I delve into anything deeper, I'm curious what you two think. I'd, I'd go with DC's Champions. Mutants Masterminds. Or D20 Modern. Tell me more about DC's Champions, Matthew. It's an old game. Uh, late 80s, I think. Now, are you referring to the 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 DCE game that was D6 from FASA? Yeah. Oh, it's funny you say that. Because there is specifically the Batman role-playing game. There is. Based on that, from that era. I think it was 1989. That was just the first yeah. uh, book I ever opened in a shop. I don't know, remember enough to tell you about it. But there's a picture of Batman in there. And I opened it as fuck uh, twelve, thirteen year old eighty nine. That would have yeah. been yeah twelve, and went <gasps> thirteen. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, you could also run this in any of the old D six engine games, yeah, and you there could. were a handful of different implementations of D six because the Star Wars D six yeah West End was games. different yeah the yeah, right West End not FASA the Star Wars D six was actually different than their DC Heroes D6. It, it was very much yeah. so. Because the DC Heroes D6, if I remember correctly, used more of a dice pool, whereas the Star Wars game used more of a dice adding thing. Yeah, they you, still used, basically had the same character sheets. Yeah, yeah, the the West End games for Star Wars, it was, you know, it, it, your your main trait, you had like 4D plus an additional yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah so and the other like one roll was extra big, dice was a, and a add big whatever. die pool. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of like... It was the equivalent if you're going to play like Exalted now where you have nothing but D10s. You have your D10 dice pool and you're just like, I'm going to do this. And you roll 100 fucking D10 and you take your successes out of it. Tell me more about Mutants and Masterminds and why you'd do it. We've talked about it before, yeah, we, but we've, we've never gone into it. We've never it. really gone into it. I, I, I've had a little, I've, I've had cursory experience with it, but I, what I, I, the experience I have, I have liked it. I liked the setting of what? I feel bad. I have to get down to Guardian Games because some of these old games that I bring up, I can pick up for five bucks. Now. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's that old game. And you're like, well, tell me about it. And I'm like, uh, um, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, and I'm like, I'm just, guys, go down to your friendly local game shop and buy up all the old stuff. Well, just do it. It kind of goes back to like when we, when we started this, you had cut your teeth on Palladium. Palladium. Right? D&D. Hardcore yeah. Palladium and D&D. I cut my teeth on D&D. And West End games, and, and I cut my. And teeth then I got into D twenty, D twenty modern, and then I played a lot of White Wolf. You know, you know, I did too. Vampire, LARPing. So I still have my. You first have a lot more. Sheets. Yeah, same here. You have a lot more. <clears throat> werewolf forever. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot a guru, more. Bitch. Well, ra- you know, <laughs> so, is that why they call us bros? <laughs> so, guru, bitch. Before Vampire, I had a buddy of mine who's now who's who's now passed. He was like, "Hey, dude, we're putting my brother's running this game. It's, it's called Werewolf. Do you want to come down and play?" And this was my first interaction with with live action role playing. And I see it, and I'm like, well, "You guys are fucking playing war- werewolves. That's that's fucking stupid." Two weeks later, I'm playing a fucking vampire game. No, no, that's stupid. Werewolf I know. was right. <laughs> vampire fucking stupid. No, we 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 got into having having fucking werewolves in our in our storyline, and they beat the shit out of us. Like, yeah, we hardcore. do because we're better. Fuck, 
anyway, yeah. means and masterminds, Dusty. Uh, <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, the little bit that I that I had, the little Poor experience. Guy. I had. <laughs> You're like, come on, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> A buddy of mine who is a, a game designer, Ben, uh, he he got us into doing a session with Mutants and Mastermind where everyone was just everyday normal humans and then there was a, a radiated explosion and you all of a sudden were mutated and you had special powers. Like my character tur- basically turned into the thing. Okay, but tell me about why do you think the system would be good for Batman? Oh, mostly just because of the, the superheroes background you know you okay. can honestly really do this well with d20 modern or any I think of the modern that, yes. settings I, ultimately i don't think you need a system that does superheroes because that's what i was of, thinking d20 modern and yeah, none of them are actually superheroes you have you people who the, are hurt you can fucking do this with D. yeah Batman, you, have, you, have, you have people who are hurt yeah. and you have people with toys and that's it Mutants and Mastermind, I just like the setting. At least for this movie, not larger Batman, Justice League, DC Universe. Well, I'm going to break out here, and I'm going to talk about some larger Batman first before I talk about the games that I think that I would run. But for larger Batman, and specifically because I tried to watch Batman the movie from 1966 last night, (laughs) but I've also been replaying through Batman Arkham Asylum, the video game, which was amazing. Beautiful game. I want to talk about something that we talked about when we did the uh, Die Hard episode, is let's turn the tables. You're the Joker. You're the Penguin. You're the Riddler. And you're Catwoman. Harley Quinn. Sure, yeah, you're Jessica also still has that outfit. It's real nice. <laughs> it's real nice. But, and you're a team of super villains taking fighting, down the Batman. I'm down. fighting I'm against down. one rogue maverick. Okay, so we're doing <laughs> Suicide Squad going after Batman. So and we could break out Necessary Evil from Savage Worlds. We could break out Villains Unlimited from Palladium. Yeah, yeah. we could build a team of super villains who have to. Fail you know to what? work. Scratch, scratch whatever else you have. Let's do that. Yeah, that sounds like I, a lot I, of fun. That does to me. sound like a lot of fun. Because ultimately, as you were saying, Matthew, the Joker carried this movie. Oh God, yeah. So let's make a game where we play the Joker and do crazy ass shit. Okay, so what's the best for that? Well, because honestly, that, you, you have that. That's a good idea, and we shouldn't go into the rest <laughs> of it because the 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 whole premise is. We're doing it off the movie, and you're absolutely right, man. This movie was nothing. Mark Hamill saved the day, so let's do that. I <laughs> scratch what you got. Let's talk yeah. about this. What I was planning on talking about, and give, I, I want to give a shout out D20 to a handful Martyr. of games here that personally, okay. if I was going to run Batman. What I would do is I would pick something more detective based because Detective Batman, the noir style of this movie and the show, the the Humphrey Bogart film noir approach to solving a mystery and then punching some vil- villains is how I would do it. Wasn't There's, there a Savage Worlds noir one that would... Yeah, there was. I saw it, I think. I don't... There's okay, a Deadlands. I think I, I think I have a digital noir. copy of it. There's yeah. a Deadlands yeah, noir. Okay. Well, it's that's still Savage Worlds it's now. It's Savage Worlds. It's Deadlands noir. I've never I haven't read it. So I don't really know if it's good. But Savage Worlds could work for the whole 1960s Batman because all he's doing is punching his way through an army of mooks. Yeah. Like we were watching the movie last night and as soon as Batman meets up with with the penguin and the the Joker, it's, it's like punching. All right, it's like, all right, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. And then all of a sudden, nope, we're just going to punch each other. It's just, it's a slugfest at yeah. that point. Savage Worlds could do that because he just beats up an army of mooks. And I must give a shout out to the 1960s series and say that the fight choreography was actually pretty cool. Good job, Adam West. Good job, Burt Ward. I understand you went to the emergency room a lot. I'm sorry. But I liked the investigation aspect i like the detective batman you Agreed. like the where, competence where, porn where he where he goes into the graveyard looks at the grass and goes chemicals have been here i agree that is some <laughs> that is sherlock holmesian <laughs> investigation i really liked <laughs> the detective version of batman specifically i, I agree but i'm just yeah. saying it's not coming off this well, particular movie this whole movie was a noir film it was straight up like the hero is being framed for crimes and they have to go clear their name now whether or not you liked that portrayal of it that's clearly what they were going for 